man and anything we place above God in our lives clouds our vision and can crush our confidence. Today we're learning how to break free and create healthy boundaries. Of course, my father controlled me mm. when I was growing up and through that control sexually abused me. Mm. And uh, I was so, I mean, I grew up in absolute, I don't remember, ever remember anything but fear. Mm. And so he used that fear to control me and it was so hard mm. to break free of that. And so I left home when I was 18. Of course, that was a break from that, but then I fell into a pattern of, and I remember basically two instances in particular where when I would be around anybody that had a personality like his, mm -hmm. I would come under that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I, I worked for somebody in a church <laughs> that also had that controlling, strong mm -hmm. personality. And I felt like if I didn't do everything they wanted me to do that I would lose my opportunity to minister and that was so important to me. And uh, when I finally broke free from that, I was complaining to God and like, it's just not right that he controlled me all these years. Mm. And see, we get mad at the people wow. who mistreat us, mm -hmm. but we're equally as guilty if we don't confront. Mm. Very good. Mm. And confrontation is so hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. For most everybody, but for some people, it is really, really, really hard. Yeah. And you just, you know, as far as how do you break free from controlling power, mm. you have to confront it. Mm -hmm. yes. Rather that's going to somebody and say, look, I know this is just as much my fault as yours, yeah. but I feel like that, you know, you're controlling me, you're manipulating me, you're making all my decisions for me and things have to change if we're gonna stay in relationship. You have to know when you confront something like that, that whoever you're confronting, they will get mad. Yep, yeah. They will not like it and you will have to stand your ground. And it's, you know, fear is a terrible thing. My mother, didn't do anything about the abuse that she knew was going on with my father. And to be honest, it was actually harder for me to forgive her than it was him. Sure. Because it's, it's hard still to think, how can a mother know yeah. that her husband is sexually abusing her daughter and not do anything about it? But, but here's, here's an interesting thing. It was 30 years after it happened before she ever apologized to me. But she said, I'm sorry for what I let your father do to me. Now listen to this. She said, I didn't think mm. Mm -hmm. that I could take care of you and your brother. Wow. I didn't wow. think mm -hmm. that I could make it on my own. Wow. And so her thoughts, her wrong yes. thoughts. Mm -hmm. Wow. Kept her. Practically destroyed me. Mm -hmm. Did end up destroying my brother who, yeah. sad to say, committed suicide. And, uh, and it was all based on fear. Yeah. Mm. She just ruined her whole life because she was afraid of him and she would not confront him. And so it is very, it, it's control mm -hmm. is a type of witchcraft. Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. It's, it's demonic yes. from the word go. Yes. And you should not allow yourself to get into relationships that are controlling, that's why Boundaries are so important. Yes. If you haven't read Henry Cloud's book, Henry Cloud, mm -hmm. John Townsend's book on boundaries, you need to get it yeah, because very good. if we're going to have safe relationships, we have to have boundaries. Yeah. And that means, you know, this is acceptable, but this isn't. Yeah. And I, I don't know, it's been probably seven or eight years ago now, I realized that I had a lot of one-sided relationships where I did all the giving and the other people did all the taking. Mm -hmm. And I just decided I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. I'll have no friends mm -hmm. or I will have friends yeah. where we're gonna respect one another. Yes. Yep. And it's not gonna be all one-sided. One I was engaged when I was 21 and it was my early college years. And you know, there's one thing to be under a controlling person. It's another thing when that controlling person actually kn knows the word of God, doesn't yep. understand it, mm -hmm. but but misuses the word misuses of God. It, and they use the word yeah. to control you and to hold you under it. Mm -hmm. 
And it was such a difficult thing to break free from because I'd already decided before I ever even knew that he was interested in me, that he was the dream. Like that was, he, he, he checked all the boxes of the thing that looked like it was the right thing. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait, he's paying attention to little old me. Like he actually likes me. And then you start believing, well, that you ignore the signs mm-hmm. um, because you think, well, this, I'm, I can make this work. Yep. Whatever it is he Absolutely. needs me to be Absolutely. or however I need to change myself or whatever I need to do, which is why I started sticking my finger down my throat and why I started, you know, doing things that were destroying my body because I was trying to be some sort of ideal for somebody that I had no business even being in a relationship with. Yep. Um, and I had decided that that was more important to listen to what it was that he was saying than to listen to what it was that God was saying. And I, I think because I was in something that I shouldn't have been in, I couldn't hear that still small voice anymore. I couldn't recognize that still small voice of the Holy Spirit trying to say, hey, red flag, <laughs> waving it, you know, you, you need to break that off. I was waiting for somebody else to step in and miraculously do it. And sometimes we have to actually just make that decision. This is toxic. This is wrong. And you have to just learn how to, no matter what it's going to cost me or how bad it's going to hurt, I'm going to do what I know I'm supposed to do because God's going to take care of me once I do. Mm. And I thank God that I I did. But for me, it wasn't just I'm breaking it off and saying I actually left town. (laughs) Like, I had to move away. That is right. why I joined that singing group I've talked so often about. I literally got on a bus and left town. Mm-hmm. And that's what some of you actually need to do that are under a, a, a controlling relationship. It isn't going to be enough mm-hmm. just to say, hey, I've got to get out of this. And then you just kind of go about your life as usual. Some of you are going to have to get on a bus and get out of town. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to get away from what that is yeah. that's controlling you. Yeah, I wasn't smart enough to say, Right. I don't before I said I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so now I was caught in it. And I wasn't allowed to get the mail from the mailbox. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere without asking. I had to, you know, I dressed a certain way, held myself a certain way. Yes. And in public, I said, bless God. And I'm, you know, blessed and highly favored. How are you doing? I'm, you know, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. The, and, 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 the mantras were true, but they didn't see the other side of yeah. the home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. so um, there was a lot of fear yeah. there. You know, I remember even after it was over, I couldn't even sleep for a while because if I'd heard, if I'd hear uh, the the water drip in the the bathroom, or if I'd hear the toilet, you know, the water come back on, it would just send shocks of fear through me because I was like, he's going to wake up, he's going to get me, he's going. He wasn't even there anymore. So, you know, so you, there are things that yes. really happen. And so it was the Lord that had to deliver me, but it took time. Yes. It wasn't just a, you know, some things are miraculous and God will snap his finger and it's over, but other things are processed. They take healing. It takes mm-hmm. months and sometimes years of counseling and talking about it and seeing that everything is not that. Every relationship is not like that mm-hmm. before you gain confidence. Oh, okay, that this is something new. I can trust it. I can relax in the Lord in this, that he's going to take care of me. Yes. What are some signs from anybody? Mm-hmm. Let's help these people right. know if they're even beginning to get in, because you know you can straighten it out yes. quicker mm-hmm. in the beginning. Because if you stand up for yourself, people will respect you. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. When you let people control you, to be honest, there's a part of them that wishes that you would have some guts and tell them to shut up. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yes. what are some yeah. of the signs to watch you, for? When someone is trying to change who you are, you're not good enough. There's a difference between constructive criticism and tearing down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my husband can give me constructive criticism, but he doesn't tear me down. Right. He builds me up. Even when he's constructively criticizing, I might not like yeah. it in the moment, <laughs> but I realize that what he's doing is he's building me up. He's right. building me up. He's building me up in the word. He's building me up with truth. And I think that part, when you're in any kind of relationship where you are constantly being torn down or feeling like you're not enough or feeling like, I remember the line he used to always use on me, not he, my husband, but he that shall not be named. Um, (laughs) He used to always say, well, you're almost pretty. You're almost good enough. You're almost. And that word almost was so destructive in my life of that you're almost, because it sounds like he's kind of telling you that you're kind of good at this, but you're Mm. almost good enough 
And you oh, always God, feel, yeah. exactly. You already know that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and you feel like, well, that almost, that if, there, if you're in any kind of relationship, um, and it's, it's funny because this is a fine line of, you know, in a day and age that we're living in where everybody's talking about church abuse, right? Of being um, misused and church mistreated hurt. and church hurt. And the truth is, there has been some legitimate church abuse or abuse from this or abuse from that. But every time you serve just because you volunteered and you've served for 12 hours is not church abuse. Right. Like yeah. there's a difference yeah, yeah, right. between saying, yeah. okay, they didn't put me on the front of the stage and so my feelings are hurt. Mm -hmm. They didn't use me in the way I thought it needed to be used. That's not what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's ah. a, there's, a, there's a difference yeah. and we're in a day and age right now where everybody's all of a sudden finding their voice yeah. of being able to speak up. And we want you to speak up in a toxic environment if you're in a toxic relationship. But it's not just because you didn't get what you want. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. I think some of the signs are if you're not able to disagree right. without getting in trouble. In a healthy right. way. In a healthy <laughs> way. In a healthy yes. way. So not yeah. just in a smart aleck, but just like, yeah. I, you know, if you're not able to voice that. If you're not able to, um, if you're being controlled in like what you wear, what you say, and not that there's... Because, like you said, critique. Let me say, babe, you know, you might be showing too much of your treasures in that right there. Like, you look good, but I don't want you showing. That's different than, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's different than, no, you can never. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, you know, there, we know when we're being confined and we're not able to be free to be ourselves. When you're not able to talk with other people anymore. Right. When like my father didn't want my mother to have any friends. So, yeah, right. that's, yes. Yeah. Check. Alienate. Um, so, there are a lot of red flags like that. Or if they're putting their hands on you. The one I was talking right. about, when we were dating, before we said, I do, we were disagreeing about something. I don't know what it was. But before I knew it, he had his hand around my neck and I was up against the wall. Yeah. You know, but he also knew the scripture and he knew how to all of a sudden say, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I, you know, and you know, I promise I won't do it again. And then after I said, I do, and I still married him, he was like, I promise I'm gonna love you this time. Like Christ loved the church and gave himself for him. Like I had a great right. upbringing. My dad was great. Mom was great. No drama growing up. He had a lot of drama from the time he was born. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I can even the scales. I can balance. I'll give him some of my good, take some of his bad. It'll be fine. Uh -huh. But it doesn't work like that, no. you know? And I wish I had the wisdom then to say, uh, I can't work everything together for my good. Only God can, mm -hmm. right. you know? But I cannot yes. be God or the Holy Spirit in somebody else's life, mm -hmm. even though I may have a heart for them, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so... I don't think there's too much worse than being in a controlling relationship. Yes. Yeah. Uh -uh. Because you, you, can't, you can't be a God pleaser and a man pleaser. No, yeah. And we're gonna all stand before God one day and give an account mm -hmm. yes. of our life and just saying, well, they controlled me, he's not gonna get it. Nope. No. no. Nope. Because God expects us mm -hmm. to stand up against things mm -hmm. that are wrong yeah. and not right. Yeah. And like growing up, I mean, you ate what my dad wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. You went to bed when he wanted to go to bed. You watched what he wanted to watch on TV. I mean, there was, there was no... Everything was him, what he yeah. wanted. Yeah. There was never any consideration mm -hmm. of anybody else. He would get mad if my mother She'd would try to go to house. church. <laughs> he just, it was just ridiculous. He gave her very little money, just I think like $2 a week was her allowance or something. And, and uh, he beat her up on a regular basis, go out and get drunk, come home and beat her. And she just put up with that because that's what women thought they were supposed to do. Now they've kind of come out on the other side. Yeah with a bad attitude, it's like, well, bless God, nobody's yeah. gonna ever tell can't me. Can't do anything, can't even look right. at me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't even, don't, yeah. don't, try, don't try to tell me anything. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's wrong too, so people need to, to find balance. balance. But I'm just really encouraging you, if you are in a relationship where you are being controlled in a demonic way, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. you need to pray this through and get the strength from God yes. to start confronting it. You guys were talking about relationships, but I, I feel like for me, because of my lack of self-love, mm -hmm. because I was, you know, a broken kid and I didn't get that affirmation from my family, I looked for it in my spiritual family mm -hmm. and uh, didn't understand at the time because, again, I thought that oh, I will never amount to or measure up to being like these people and I'm just going to do everything they say because their life is perfect. My, my home life wasn't. And 
So, you know, I'm going to give everything. And I served and I did everything, but I didn't realise that I was being yeah. controlled. Yeah. And, um, and so when we do talk about church hurt, yes. church abuse, you know, there was some of that, but I don't hate the church now and I don't hate God and I don't hate Jesus and I don't, I'm now a pastor of a yeah. church because we, <laughs> I allowed God to heal me. But I think those signs of what you're saying can happen yes. in spiritual yes. uh, relationships as well. It's just, you're not free to be yourself. Right. And you're conditioned to think a certain way. Yeah. And just the, the shaming, mm. the yes. constant shaming. And so again, just feeling so scared and then just feeling, oh, I'll never measure up, so I'll just do. And I was the ultimate people pleaser because of that. Right. Just disgusting yeah. <laughs> to the yeah. point where I used to even push my husband aside to please these people over right. here. And my poor husband's like, you answer to them more than you answer to me. Mm. And it was a very unhealthy relationship. And so it was that time, but like you said, you have to confront it. And so once I allowed Jesus to heal my heart and I forgave and let go and realised, I did have, have to go and have that conversation. And, and it's it, scary. And it didn't what, go well. And it didn't go well for a number of years. But, you know, the, the vindication of God, several years later, God's turned that thing around for good. He was able to redeem that relationship. Now, will I go park myself in there again? No. But there's health there, but yeah. you, you have to stand up for yourself because I think you do have a responsibility to do what is right in, in God's you know, eyes. People that are controllers, they're not strong, they're very weak people. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're insecure mm -hmm. and they're weak and that, that's how they feel they get their importance right. by controlling other people. And yep. when, when I had the church situation that I was letting myself be controlled in. When I did confront it, the first thing I heard was, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Well, that in mm -hmm. itself yes. tells you there's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because this person thought they were superior yes. to everybody else. Yes. And the only people who think that are those who really are very insecure. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's a weird thing. It just kind of yeah. comes out, yep. you know, crazy. But it, you, you just have to realize that Yes, we want to please people. We want to make people happy. But you can't, you have to be free to follow the guidance and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And if you're not, I went to a church for a period of time that was, was during something called a shepherding movement. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. But it was, um, it got so bad that if you wanted to sell your house, you had no. to go and get the, the pastor no. and his wife's no. permission. No. They, had, they had to feel that it was God wow. in order wow. for Gosh. you to do that. That is so much and responsibility. I mean, there, was, there was such ridiculous things yeah. going on. And the, the thing that's so sad is that church was full of people that are now in full-time ministry that have great ministries. Ours was one of them. And that church had everything it needed mm. to be one of the greatest churches in the world. And it was totally destroyed. Mm. I mean, no longer exists. Wow. Because these people wanted to control everything mm. that went on. Yeah. And uh, it's just, you have to realize that it's wrong. It's not God. Yes. And, yeah. you know, like we want to pray it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you got to confront. You do. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times people say, well, I'm just praying. I'm waiting on God. He's waiting but on you. But <laughs> you better make sure you're yeah. not just avoiding. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not just avoiding your responsibility yes. to stand up to it and take your part of the responsibility because like yes, God said to me. Yeah. Some of it was us. 100%. It's actually scary because that's the place why I didn't want to be in ministry again because I didn't. But that's why it's like you have to be so secure in yourself so that you do lead with love and freedom and honour and there's no control because there's nothing worse, but, but it's true. It's insecurity breeds control and control is absolutely abusive and it, can, it has to stop yeah. and it's, um, it, it's, it's not good. And I've been there, done that, and will we'll, we'll not be a part of it again. That's good. Yeah, that's great. And I think too, um, you know, I love the part of your story where you confronted 
I don't love it for you in the moment, but I love it for people to hear because it didn't go well. <laughs> mm-hmm. You confront it, because actually when you confront a controlling person, it usually it doesn't yeah. go well. Yeah. But it's still there. I think it's just important to stay, say in this day we live in that the way to confront it is not to blast it on social media. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the way to confront That's it right. is yeah. not to go to other people right. and yeah. blast it. That's a coward's it way of confronting it. It is yes, a coward's it is. way of confronting it. And we're seeing a lot of that in our culture in this moment. So the way to do it is to go to the person that is controlling you, and it's probably not going to go well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's still, but God in the end yes. will turn it around for your That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when, when I first started getting speaking engagements and my ministry was growing, people would say, well, God told us that you're supposed to come and speak. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, he's going to fight with God. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, was t- I was saying yes to so many things that I made myself literally physically sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because I wouldn't say no, mm-hmm. I didn't, didn't want to say no. And finally, I got to the point where when people would say, well, God told us, I'd say, well, he didn't told me. Yeah, Until he tells me, yes. you know, I'm not, you have to follow the leadership That's right. That's it. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so often he gives you. people, I got into that people pleasing yeah. in, a, in a church situation, yep. whole different church, not yeah. the, yeah. I've had a lot of church problems. But, uh, <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. But, uh, uh, yeah. I, I wanted to be in the important group mm. because I was insecure. Mm. And the only way to get into that important group was to get friendly and accepted by this one woman mm. who kind of controlled everything. And I, you know, I played up to her and did everything I could and finally got her friendship and Boy, we were part of the group. And you know what? When I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and God called me to teach, Mm. they were the first ones to reject me Mm. and tell me that I was out of the group. Mm, (laughs) And so the way you get in the group is the way you're going to have to to live to stay there. Yes, and you're going to to get tired of Mm -hmm. it before long. Yes, you know, I think that's why it's so important to when you finally realize that I am living for the audience of one. Yes. Right. And it doesn't really matter what anybody says yes. except God. That's right. um, I find myself sitting here today going, man, I'm naturally a fighter on the inside. I am a scrapper mm. on the inside. I got it from my daddy, <laughs> you know, and I know that there were times that it, church abuse, I guess I, I guess I had that mm. yep. in, in a few, I was trapped in a, pastor's office by the guy who was their special speaker, that type of stuff, you know, a few yeah. times in relationships I should have never yeah. been in. Yeah. And, um, but for the saving grace of God. Thank and you. I love what you said, it did not make me hate the church. That's right. Yeah. You know what, everyone right. will stand before God that's for themselves. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing with people pleasing. I think you are so scared of rejection. I think my whole issue was rejection. Right. That was my, my brokenness. And so I did anything to not be rejected. It was like, please pick me, pick me, until I had a revelation that I am not a reject. I am a daughter of the King. Therefore, I am accepted. I am, I am, I'm royalty. So you can reject me, but I will not feel the rejection anymore. And people pleasing just went out the door in Jesus. I've heard that people work harder at trying to not be rejected than they do at healthy relationships. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree. Wow. Because the, they can measure it, like medically, they can measure it on equipment. Wow. And when you're rejected, it measures the same, the pain level measures the same as if you were physically injured. Wow. Yeah. That's how painful rejection is. And I don't, I don't think we even know all the dancing around and games we play sometimes to keep just from getting rejected. Father, we thank you for beginning to teach us what we need to know. And I pray that you would give people that are being controlled courage yes, yes, God. to begin to confront it yes. and to start backing out of those controlling relationships, even yes. if the relationship has to end. Yep. Yes. Sometimes there are necessary endings. Yeah. And so show people what they should do, teach them, yeah. guide them, 
but I pray that they would no longer live under the control and the manipulation Amen. of somebody who's just using them. Yes, Lord. Thank you for helping them. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.